Now before we jump into making the pizza that I made for the legendary Wolfgang Puck, we need to make the dough to this bar style Chicago pizza that I had to make. So let's just jump right into it. Now before we get into making the dough, we need to make our pre-ferment or our starter. It's sort of like a mini dough you make ahead of time that gets the fermentation process started and improves the taste, the structure, and the shelf life of the dough. You just take a scale, we need about 70 grams of water at room temperature, a quarter teaspoon or 0.5 grams of instant yeast and then about 80 grams of bread flour. Mix that well, cover, and let it rest for about three to 10 hours until it triples in size. You can mark it a little bit so you can judge how much it rises. And you can keep it nice and warm if you wrap it in a towel. Now I've got a starter ready to go, but even just after 30 minutes to an hour, you can see that the starter we just made has almost doubled in size. Our starter's ready to go. Now the reason I was cooking for Wolfgang Puck in the first place is because I was asked to be on First We Feast's Pizza Wars that aired this past Monday, hosted by the lovely and talented Nicole Russell. And we were tasked to make bar style Chicago pizza. Thin crust pizza cut into squares served at bars. Now I never grew up eating that. The closest thing I ever had was the Domino's thin crust. So I ended up consulting pizza consultant Anthony Falco and we settled on his thin and crispy pizza dough. I cut it in half for this recipe and here's how to make it. Baker's percentages are used to help bakers scale recipes easily. Assuming flour is always 100%, you measure all the ingredients as a percentage of flour to indicate how much of it everything needs to be added. I chose this dough because I was going for a New York style thin crust pizza made in the style of a Chicago bar style pizza. So instead of making like a more cracker like dough like they do in Chicago bar style, I'm using more of a thin crust New York. So it's putting a little bit of my flair on it. Plus, I don't know how to make that cracker style dough quite yet. We'll cover that on a later video. So first we gotta get the flour measured and we're gonna measure everything in grams. We wanna tear it out. We're gonna start with about 500 grams of bread flour. Falco's recipe calls for 50-50 bread flour AP flour, but I go with only bread flour. Next, in a small bowl, we're gonna measure 15 grams of kosher salt, then measure out 300 grams of water, also at room temp, and then measure 40 grams of olive oil, which is gonna help the dough get nice and crispy. And then we're gonna take our starter. And as you can see, the fermentation already started. We can take the 300 grams of water we measured out, place it on the scale, tear it, and then we can add the starter to it. And then we can measure out the starter in the water, about 75 grams. You can also see if the starter is still alive by checking if it floats, which it does. Then this is an optional step, but I'm gonna add another half a teaspoon of instant yeast, which should help create a crispier crust. Now to bring it all together, we're gonna add the salt to the flour. This recipe does not call for an auto -lease step, which is the act of mixing the dough without salt and then adding the salt later. We're gonna mix that flour into the salt and then mix the starter into the water. And then we're gonna add the water mixture directly into the flour mixture. And with your dominant hand, start to massage and knead the flour and water until a ball forms. And the dough sucks up all the flour that's in the bowl. Once that ball forms, we're gonna add the oil and then we're gonna knead and work that dough until the oil is fully absorbed by the dough. It sucks up all the oil and we're just gonna knead it until a glossy dough has formed. But it doesn't have to be smooth really. It's gonna have a little craggly texture to it, which is okay. We're gonna cover it in plastic, let it rest at room temp for 30 minutes. It's gonna relax, give it time to hydrate and make the dough easier to work with. Now we still have a little bit of that starter left. So if I wanted to feed it to keep it alive, I can put it right on the scale and I can take whatever that starter weighs and add the same amount of flour and water to it. So if it weighs 50 grams, I'm gonna add 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of room temp water, mix it, cover it, let it sit out at room temperature until it rises again. And then you can keep it in the fridge. So now it's been 30 minutes and our dough is nice and relaxed and we want to take it out of the bowl and we just want to start to fold and stretch it onto itself. It's going to really start to smooth out and take the shape of a pizza dough. And then I like to get it into the bowl and just knead it for about five minutes. The ball should look much smoother than it did before that first round of resting. And then we're gonna get it back into the bowl, cover and let it rest for another two hours at room temperature. And here's a look at that starter we made this morning about tripled in size. We're just gonna toss that in the fridge now and hold it there. After that two hours, we're gonna take it out of the bowl and we're gonna start to fold it onto itself. Get it onto the bench, start to shape it into like a large pizza dough ball. We wanna work it on the board using our hands and sort of pull it into like a tight ball. And once we have a ball 
wall that's nice and tight and the top exterior is nice and smooth. Then we're gonna get that back into a lightly oiled bowl, cover it up, put it in a very warm place. I like to put it in my warmest room, wrapped in a blanket and let it rise for about three hours. And at this point we can take it out of its bowl. We can put it onto a lightly floured bench and then we can start to portion out our dough ball. I like to take a bench scraper and uh, I cut the dough ball in half, but not all the way through, almost making like a long snake. And then from there, I'm gonna take one end of the dough ball and just start to roll it onto itself. And we're looking for about 200 gram dough balls. If I'm a few grams over, I'll tear some of the dough off, add it back to the main batch. If I'm a little under, I'll tear from the main batch, add it to my dough ball. It should give you four 200 gram dough balls plus one 100 gram dough ball, which is perfect for like a little kiddo. You make them a little mini pizza of their own and they'll love it. Once we have the dough balls weighed, we wanna go through lightly oil, some circular Pyrex containers. Then we wanna shape the dough into nice, round, tight, smooth dough balls. Just roll it around your hand, use the edges of your hand to sort of pinch it sealed underneath, and you just wanna make sure that there's no gap on the side. You wanna make sure the dough is nice and sealed. You also wanna make sure you create a nice, tight ball. Then you can get them into the bowls to rest. Now, if you wanted to use this dough right now, you're gonna need to let this proof again for another few hours until these dough balls basically double in size. But we're not gonna cook these yet. We're gonna cook these in two days or 48 hours and we're gonna slowly ferment them in the refrigerator. This slow fermentation in the fridge is gonna slow down everything. It's gonna rise, but at a much slower pace, but it'll also develop structure. It's gonna develop flavor. And then when we're ready to cook it in two days, we're gonna take them out of the fridge and then we're gonna let them rise. See you in two days. So now it's two days later, the dough has slowly been fermenting in the refrigerator. Now my oven is preheating with a pizza steel in the middle rack. A pizza stone or a pizza steel is pretty essential for this recipe. And I've got it preheating at around 500 degrees. And I wanna take out the dough that I'm gonna use, allow it to come to room temperature and also proof a little bit more. Like I said, I'm putting you into my mindset prior to the shoot of this episode on Pizza Wars. And right now I don't know who's judging, so I'm just trying to formulate a solid pizza to present to whoever will judge. And so now that I got this sort of dough that's a little bit more New York, and now I'm thinking I could play with the sauces, you could play with the toppings. And so I figured I'd just make like a, a simple but solid pie with a few interesting changes to it. And one of the changes was swapping out tomato sauce for vodka sauce. So this is more or less the vodka sauce we've already covered on this show, but I'll just give a quick recap and I make it in a slightly adjusted way. I'm gonna take a can of whole peeled tomatoes run them through a food mill. You could also use a, a tomato passata or a puree. I like starting from whole peeled tomatoes because they are a higher quality tomato than the tomatoes they use for the purees. Those are usually like a grade B tomato. Then we're gonna slice up some garlic really thin and I'm gonna use a wide pan so I can kind of reduce this quicker than I would in a pot. I'm gonna cover the bottom with olive oil and then I'm gonna add the sliced garlic and a basil stem and I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt and I'm gonna bring that oil up to temperature and, and start to cook it until the garlic begins to brown around the edges. Then I'm gonna add something that I didn't add in my original vodka recipe, which is tomato paste directly to the oil and the garlic. Maybe about a tablespoon or so, and I'm just gonna work that into the oil just to build a little bit more depth of flavor. Once that tomato paste has cooked for a minute or two, I'm gonna hit, turn the heat completely off, and then I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or two of the vodka. If the flame is on at all, all that spitting will ignite, which is fine if you want to flambe the pan, but I generally don't like doing Doing that at home. Once the vodka is slightly reduced, we can get the heat back on and then we can add our fresh tomatoes. And once the tomatoes are in, we can hit it with a little bit of salt and then bring it up to a simmer. And then we want to reduce this. We're gonna reduce it further than we would a regular tomato sauce. We wanna kind of remove all of the moisture so that we're almost creating a fresh tomato paste. And I'm just gonna use a flat bottom wooden spoon to judge how thick and how reduced this sauce is becoming. It should take about 20 to 30 minutes to get this sauce reduced. If at any point you see lots of splattering of tomatoes, that means the heat's a little bit too high and all you want to do is just drop that down to a point where the bubbling and the spitting has subdued. 
And so we just want to keep reducing this until we can take our flat bottom spoon and push it all to one side of the pan and have it sort of stay there without it spreading back out. That's a good thickness for this because we want it to be a little loose because we're making a pizza and the sauce will reduce in the oven. So at this point, we're just going to start to add cream a little bit at a time. We can keep adding cream until we reach that beautiful orange color that we're looking for in a penne vodka and then it's got a nice thickness. I use about a half a pint of cream. Adjust the seasoning and then we can get it out of the pot to cool before we start making pizzas. Next up, we have our cheese. Here I have a whole milk mozzarella and a fresh mozzarella. But this fresh mozzarella is like a little bit more dried. It's sort of cured. A lot of the moisture is removed, making it somewhat suitable to make pizza with. You could experiment with like two thirds fresh mozzarella to the whole milk mozzarella or vice versa, different ratios. But I'm going with about a 50-50 blend. So for the cheese, I chose to slice instead of grate just to give me more control over the amount of cheese that I'm adding per pie. So I just measure out about three ounces of, of that fresh dried mozzarella ball and then about three ounces of the low moisture whole milk mozzarella. And I just weigh them on a scale just to be precise, but I keep the rest of the cheese whole and covered so it doesn't dry out. Next up, we got the pepperoni and I just take a whole stick of this boar's head pepperoni and I just cut little rounds of it. Next up, we've got the bell pepper, and I just want to create these little kind of pops of sweetness on the pie. So I'm just going to cut the cheeks off the pepper, cut them into thin strips, and then cut them into small dices. Next up, we've got the onion. I'm just going to use about a half onion. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to remove that little core, too, just to get perfect little slices of onion. Cut the root and the stem off of the onion, and then slice it into not super thin slices, but not super thick slices, maybe about an eighth of an inch thick. Too big and they won't cook, and too thin, and they'll just shrivel up and disappear. Then we got some nice pickled jalapenos. I try and find ones that are a little thinner than the super thick ones you might find in the store, or you can make some yourself. And then we've got the finishing touch, our sriracha honey. It's a beautiful, flavorful thing that's gonna add some balance to the pie. We're basically gonna go with about a tablespoon or two of honey, and then maybe a teaspoon of the sriracha. And we're gonna mix it together, and that sriracha is gonna loosen the honey up so that it can more easily drizzle on top of the pie even. I don't want thick globs of honey on the pie at the end. And now we've got our and plus. We've got our sliced cheese, we've got our Parmigiano Reggiano, we've got our vodka sauce, we've got our sliced pepperoni, our diced bell pepper, our sliced onion, our pickled jalapenos, we've got some dried oregano, or in my case, I've got a little blend of Italian seasoning. We've got a little bit of salt and our hot honey. Now our dough is proof, let's inspect. Dough's nice and smooth airy, it's bouncy, it's a good looking dough. Now we're ready to make pizza. Now I'm gonna use two types of flour, a semolina flour and the bread flour we used. I'm gonna put the bread flour into a little bowl and I'm gonna use that to just dredge the dough so that it won't stick to the board. So you just wanna let the dough dip into the flour, give it a flip, get both sides covered in flour and always be mindful of where the bottom and the top of the dough is. Right now the bottom of the dough is facing up. We don't need to form a crust around the edge, so I'm just gonna pat it flat as best I can and try and form a nice circular shape. I gave it a flip now so that the top of the dough is facing up and I'm gonna start to do a, a stretch and slap. It's gonna get it a little bit thinner and then I'm just gonna sort of stretch it with my knuckles. Right now, the goal is to just form a circular shape and then I'm gonna transition over into a rolling pin. Make sure that the board is nicely floured and then we're gonna roll this thing out as thin as you can, all while maintaining as circular of a shape as we can. You notice how I'm sort of working the edges, some of the, the edge of the dough is getting pinched onto the board. That's fine, that's gonna just create a really thin, crispy crust. So once it's as thin as you can get it and it's as circular as you can get it, then we wanna take that semolina and we wanna add that to the pizza peel. Then just slide that dough onto the pizza peel, make sure that it's nice and slick on there and that there's no wet spots on the peel itself. Once the dough is on the pizza peel, then we're gonna dock the dough. I'm gonna take a fork and I'm just gonna poke as many holes as I can, which is gonna allow steam to escape so that the dough doesn't poof up in the oven. Then we're gonna go in with the vodka sauce and sauce goes all the way to the edge. That's gonna help prevent the dough from burning it all in the oven. Then a generous layer of Parmigiano Reggiano, a little of that Italian seasoning, and then we're going in with, with the low moisture mozzarella first. I'm just gonna tear up those slices and I'm gonna try and keep the cheese focused towards the center of the pie. On top of the low moisture mozzarella is the fresh mozzarella. I'm just gonna sort of fill those gaps with the fresh mozz. Keeping about a two inch border from the edge of the crust to the cheese, because that cheese is gonna spread out as it cooks. Too much cheese will spread out too fast and a little burnt cheese on the pizza steel is fine, but too much is no good. 
Then we're going to go in with the pepperoni and we're going to do that again, piled up towards the center but with a few spaces in between so that we can add the pickled jalapenos in those negative spaces where the pepperoni isn't. Then on top of that, the bell pepper, just a nice pop spread evenly throughout the pie. And then we're going to go in with the sliced onions. And you almost want to kind of crisscross the onions. It'll create a nice looking pattern and it'll just make the final product look better. And you want to check that the pizza can still slide off the peel. Then we're going to hit it with a little bit of salt on top. Those vegetables need to be seasoned seasoned and then into the oven onto the pizza stone. We're going to cook this for about 10 to 13 minutes. That's about the time it takes to get that crust set and nice and crispy. And about halfway through, we'll check it and I like to give it a nice turn if none of the cheese has melted onto the pizza steel too much. And then after about 11 minutes, I'm going to use a spatula to test the undercarriage to make sure that it's nice and crispy. And once the cheese is melted and the crust is set, I'm going to get it out of the oven and let it cool on a wire rack. Then I scrape any of the residue on that pizza steel just to make sure that there's no smoke out happening in my apartment. And then you just wanna let that pizza rest for a minute. And once we're ready to cut it, I'm gonna finish it with that hot honey. I'm gonna start into the center and I'm gonna drizzle all the way out to the edge. And that loose honey now, it allows it so we don't get any thick globs of honey in any one spot of the pizza. Then finish a little oregano on top and then we cut it. First, we're gonna cut it down the middle. You're gonna reveal a very thin, crispy pizza. The pizza's now cut into halves. We're gonna cut each half into half again so that there's four strips of pizza. Spin the pizza and make the same cuts but perpendicular to the first set of cuts and you should reveal a set of squares. And this is the pizza I settled on for Pizza Wars. It's like a chip, but it's a pizza. It's beautiful. The crust is nice and crispy. Now this is the pie that I arrived at prior to knowing who the judges were. And then about a week before the shoot, Wolfgang Puck got dropped on me and I started to panic. I started to rethink everything. Not only was Wolfgang one of the first chefs to put pizza on a high-end restaurant menu at Spago, when a customer asked for bagels and lox and he had no bagels, he put it on a pizza and made himself a pizza innovator. So he doesn't care about rules. So should I be going wilder? I have a catalog of grilled cheese sandwiches that I could turn into pizzas. But part of me felt like this is the pizza that I wanted to eat. And so this is the one I wanted to serve. And we even had a conversation on the show, which was directed at Wolfgang, which was in a competition that's subjective. Do you go the route that is your style and that you're comfortable with? Or do you cater to the judge who might have a different taste? It's a good question. It's why I don't do a lot of competitions because it is such a subjective thing. But this pie in and of itself, all the flavors, it really reminds me of that Domino's thin crust that I grew up eating as a kid. And that was what I was going for. We'll revisit the Chicago style bar pizza, but for now, I'll leave a link to the recipe if you wanna give this a shot. If you wanna know who won Pizza Wars, you're gonna have to tune in. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description. But for now, I'm about to smash this pizza. That's all I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. I think it's time you might want to brush up on some cacio pepe. I just made a new video teaching of various methods on how to create the creamiest cacio pepe that you've ever had. I guarantee it. Give it a shot and thanks for watching.